I found a few more obsidian tweaks and tips that I believe might be useful for you too. Let's take a look at them together. The first one is from Reddit, posted by user Tanto Monta. It is a CSS snippet that lets you easily change your active tab's appearance in terms of background color, outline color, font type, and size. First, let's see how active tabs look like by default. Obviously, this will depend on your theme. In my case, the active tab is kind of highlighted by the outline color. To customize the active tab, we need to add a short CSS snippet. To do so, we go to Settings, Appearance, and scroll all the way down to the CSS Snippets section. Click on the folder icon. This should open the local folder containing the snippets. Create a new file and give it a name that makes sense to you. I will call it Active Tab Cutter. Make sure that the file extension is CSS. If you don't see your file extensions, click on View, Show, and File Name Extensions in Windows Explorer. Now, open the file and copy the CSS code in there. You will find the link in the description. Save the file, go back to Obsidian and refresh the list of snippets. Enable the Active Tab color one and that should do it. As you can see, the change in the Active Tab color is applied right away. If you keep the CSS file open, you can play around with various colors to find the one that works best for you. The next tip comes from another Reddit user. Here is the username. You will forgive me if I do not try to pronounce it. The challenge was to find a way that lets people copy their hotkey settings from one vault or device to another. In my main vault, I have a hotkey defined for inserting callouts very quickly. For me, this is Control, Alt, and C. If I press this hotkey, Obsidian asks me for the type of callout, its title, and its text. If you want to know how this works in detail, I left a link to the respective video in the description for you. Now, let's go to my demo vault easily recognizable by the red bar on top, and press the same hotkey. As you can see, nothing happens. To make it work, we need to copy a single file from our main vault directory to the demo vault. The file is called hotkeys.json, and you can find it in your vault folder under .obsidian. For me, this is in my local OneDrive folder under resources and lean notes. I copy the file, navigate to my demo vault and paste it in the .obsidian folder over there. Coming back to my demo vault, I can now press Ctrl, Alt and C and lo and behold, it works exactly as it does in my main vault. Of course, if it's just one hotkey that you need to migrate, this is not necessary. You can simply set it up and configure it individually. But if you have a whole bunch of them, then copying the hotkeys.json file is definitely the fastest way to get everything from one vault or device to the other. Short interruption for a quick tip. All the templates I'm using here, as well as my demo vault, can actually be downloaded for free on my website. As always, the link is in the description. So if you want to get a kickstart, you might want to give it a try. Also, since I have you already, maybe like the video, it really helps me a lot. Thank you. Obsidian properties are great and many people use them extensively. So do I. However, it can happen that a node has a lot of properties and you might not want to see all of them in the reading view. In my previous video, I showed a way to hide all the properties unless you hover over or click on the properties heading. I left a link to this video also in the description. Here is a simple way to clean them up in the reading view, but keeping them in edit mode provided by Reddit user TS Phoenix. So here is a test node with some properties, including the hide me and keep me properties. By default, I will see all these properties in edit mode and reading view. To change this, we go once again to settings, appearance and scroll down to the CSS snippets. If you click on the folder icon, an explorer window will open with the location of these snippets. This is the same that we had in the first chapter. Once again, in this folder, create a new file. I will call it hide properties and make sure its file extension is CSS. Open this file and paste the code that you can find via the link in the description into it. Now, replace the property name with the name of the property you want to hide. In my example, this is the hide me property. Save the file and go back to Obsidian. Here, we need to refresh the list of snippets and then activate the new one. After that, click out of the settings. And now we still see the hide me property in the editing mode, but in the reading view, it is not visible anymore. So this is a fast and easy way to clean up the reading view without affecting the overall structure and metadata negatively. 
Talking about properties. Even though I tend to keep my notes short, some of them get lengthy, or at least longer than a page on my screen. I have always been bothered by having to scroll up to the top of the page for editing the notes properties. Guess what? I actually didn't have to. And here is why. I have a long example note here, which also has a bunch of properties. When I continue writing, the properties disappear from the screen, and for editing them or adding new ones, I would have to scroll up. I learned only recently that I can view the active notes properties in one of the side panes in Obsidian. All I had to do was to open the command palette and find the command properties view show file properties. This opens the active notes properties in the side pane and wherever I am in the node, I can easily edit the properties without any scrolling around. So simple, so effective. I hope you found these three quick tips useful. I'm constantly searching for more and perhaps you have some that you would like to share so we can improve together. If you found this video even remotely helpful, perhaps drop a like, subscribe to the channel and ring the notification bell to make sure you won't miss the next videos. I would also appreciate if you could tell other people about it so they can also benefit from it. All this should help you to customize and find you your very own flavor of Obsidian to match your individual needs and preferences. You may also want to check out my other Obsidian videos in this growing playlist. And that's it for today. Thanks for watching and see you next time.